Since I talk a lot about releasing music and helping you plan and execute a successful release, I thought it would be fun to revisit what I went through during my first release. Um, you know, just like many of you guys, I was pretty clueless going into the process. Luckily, because I had worked hard on networking, I had met someone who was encouraging me to record an album and he said that he would produce it for free, which was exciting because I didn't know like anything about how to find a producer and stuff. I had heard some of his stuff. I thought it was really good. And so uh, he also had some connections with a studio. So that was great. He got me in the door. He got me a really good price and I was able to record my album in Orange County in a, in a wonderful professional studio. Um, I had built a band at that point to be able to tour locally. And so what was great is I was able to bring them in on several songs and that saved me a lot of money. So not having to bring in professional musicians on everything really, really helped. This band was super supportive of my stuff and they just wanted to be involved. And so I think I used them on at least four or five of the songs, um, which was really great because it made it more fun in the studio too, being a solo artist, having other people in the studio, just being able to interact and be able to enjoy the process and cheer each other on and all that stuff. So if you don't have a band, I would highly recommend trying to find some local musicians that might want to you know, make sure they're good, obviously, but might want to be involved in your recording and maybe they would trade it for just the fun experience and some pizza or something. Um, so I already had a relationship with my band, which was awesome. And of course I named them on the, the recording information and all that stuff. So they were really excited to be involved. That was great. Um, some of my other songs that I just wanted to be a little bit different feel than my band, I was able to, the studio owner, was a person who was very prolific in being able to create arrangements on his own with all of his um, you know keyboards and sounds and and loops and everything and so that was great i was able to do that and save some money there just having him paying him to create arrangements for particular songs i had given him my demo versions and i think he did that for three of them so that was great and then a couple of them were just solo songs. So me playing keyboard, just me and a key and a piano, and then one with me and a guitar. So my guitarist in my band did that. And so it really did save me a lot of money while still creating an amazing album. Um, I had so much fun doing the backups, uh, singing with myself on backups. And then my producer was also a singer. So he was able to do some of the backups too. I think that was important because I needed some depth in my backups, uh, not just me as a vocalist singing backups and just having all those like higher overtones versus some of those lower ones in the male register. So I was glad about that. Um, one thing I regret that I didn't do is take more pictures in the studio. This is something I talk about in my Rock Your Next Release workshop is just making sure that you document when you're in the studio taking pictures, taking video, uh, even journaling every day after the studio, what happened, what was fun, what went wrong, you know, uh, you know, maybe getting some bloopers and stuff to be able to use later in your marketing. So I highly recommend that you think that through before you get into the studio. Even if you're recording at home, you can do this. You can have somebody come in and document what's going on. So make sure that you've thought that through. Don't be the one to do it. Get someone involved, maybe someone on your team, maybe a volunteer, a fan that just really would love to be in the studio with you to take all this footage. Super important to document that. And maybe you can go live when you're in the studio to your fans just to give them an inside look at what's going on. So that's one thing I wish that I did better. Um, another thing that I'm glad I did is that I hired a few outside musicians for some extra parts that needed to be done, some saxophones, some electric guitar, and I was smart enough to get contracts with them. So I knew that they were, you know, they knew that they were side people. They didn't have any say or any claim to my recordings. Same thing with my producer and my studio. They all signed a work for hire agreement that you guys definitely make sure that you do that when you're in the studio. And then also I'm glad that I just had those contracts on hand for like splits and stuff because during, while I was recording, we did actually um, 
rewrite a few things, my producer and I, and you know, he's like, you know, this bridge really needs changing. Let's just, what do you think about these lyrics? And so he became a co-writer on a couple of my songs and we were able to just document that right away. So we knew, you know, who everything belonged to and we were all in agreement before we actually set down the tracks. So those are just some fun behind the scenes from my first recording. I'm so glad I did it. I'm so glad that I took the leap and did it when I did, even though I felt like I wasn't ready and I was a little bit scared to invest as much as I did, but I was able to do my entire first album for $8,000, which, you know, back, back, I guess it was a while back. So, you know, it's probably more like 12,000 now, but you know, I was able to cut those costs a lot and still record it very professionally. So I just really encourage you guys record, record, record. People need to hear your music, but just make sure you do it in a super professional way. Uh, you want to put your best foot forward when you are out online on Spotify and releasing your music. And um, for more stuff about releasing music, stay tuned because I love talking about this subject.